So Spencer, we left off talking about your motivations and kind of why you left the US. And now I wanna jump into kind of lessons that you've learned since you've moved abroad. What would you say the number one lesson is that you've learned? Uh, well, I mean, I've learned a long list of lessons. But uh, number one, the number one lesson at the top is you are always a visitor. You are a visitor, you are always a visitor. You're not a tourist, but please act accordingly, right? Like, no matter what you do, people will watch you. No matter what you do, whatever, you, like, you're going to do what you think works or makes sense, but that made sense in your home country, right? That made sense with you and the family that you have and the friends that you have and the, the, all the education that you've ever, everything that you've ever learned in your life is correct. You go to another country and you do that, it's probably gonna be incorrect. <laughs> All right. So if I had to tell anybody the number one, the number one lesson I learned, I had to learn that I am always a visitor, no matter what. So be polite, be respectful, know your know your role, and um, you know just just be kind. I also would kind of agree with what you're saying there, uh, as far as a lesson learned. Uh, you are a visitor. This is not your country. Uh, they're not going to treat you as a resident. They will treat you as a visitor. Uh, all right, so next we're gonna go into pros and cons uh, of living abroad. So can you list off a few of the, let's go with the, let's start with the negative first. Let's start with the cons. What are some of the cons that you have found since you left uh, San Diego? Let me see, I have some cons for m moving abroad and some for just Japan. So I guess I'll give them both, yeah. For moving abroad, culture shock and language. Now, there are times where you think you've seen it all, and then you just haven't. Like, there's no other way to say like, oh wow, that's different. Damn, <laughs> right? Like, oh snap. You know, or even like, or like dating is different, right? Food is different. How you see a thing is different. Like. Everything I knew about dating was flipped on its head. Everything I knew about, you know, my, my how I eat food, how I how I share food is different, right? You know, in, in the U.S., it's it's we have uh, you know potlucks. You know, everybody brings a dish, everybody hangs out, and we all share. In Japan, most of the time, there are times where it's like we have like a big food pot, and everybody's eating from the same, you know, dish, the the same big bowl of soup, and that's cool. That's totally normal in this country. Like, it's totally normal. But if you did some stuff like that in the U.S., people are gonna slap you. Like they're gonna think that why, dude, have your own bowl. Like get a smaller bowl, put your stuff in your bowl. Like the communal bowl is not supposed to be like for charity. It's not for share. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in Asia, it's all about it. It's like one big bowl, like 17 people. Life is good, right? <laughs> right? Um, and then language. You know, if you don't take language seriously, it's not like the thing that's part of your life. That's fine. Like. Big ups, you don't have to learn the language, right? Like it's not, it's not mandatory, right? Like you, they're not gonna stop you at immigration and tell you, hey, you have to learn the language, stamp the visa and tell you to be on your way. Like, no, like you don't have to learn it. It's optional, right? And it's a challenge for those who are willing to undertake it. Okay, so, but if you don't learn the language, we all know it's just an extra barrier to enjoying a full life in said country. Not saying that you couldn't enjoy, I'm not saying you couldn't enjoy it. I'm just saying there's like 0% and there's 100%. And if you don't know the language, you can't get to 100%. Like that's just impossible, right? Even the people who speak the language don't get to 100%. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's a divide. There's like a gap. Uh, next, I would say like homesick foods. Like I grew up in San Diego, so I am a big fan of like tacos and Mexican food and spice foods and like, guacamole man <laughs> like guacamole you know I'm serious I'm so serious like it's so frustrating to have you know Japanese people tell me they like spicy food none of your food is spicy like what are you talking about like where is the spice of food you know that like, y'all think pepper is spicy this is a crazy thing it's a crazy life right so that's another one and uh, I would say the third part would be connecting with friends and family it's quite difficult if you, uh, I love my friends and family. You know, clearly there's a, there's an intimacy between me and, and Abe here. And to connect with anyone, Japan is in this odd 
like forward central like timing so the sun rises here right so it's like you are always ahead of time of everybody like all the time <laughs> right like it it's so frustrating trying to get a hold of a friend or a family member like you have to wait for them to to match up with you like they're not waiting for you like if you live in japan they're not waiting for you you're waiting for them so that's just that part i mean even even us only being two hours apart like it, to connect has taken months for us to actually sit down and get this interview guys yeah that's for my, my notes say June 11 and get this I was given this probably like three months earlier or something <laughs> right so it's June 11 I was probably given this in like March and it's October and we're filming this so like be real about what's happening right oh yeah 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 absolutely all right, now you've got the, 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 the cons out there. Let's start talking about the positives. Let's hit those pros. What are some of the pros of uh, living abroad that you've come across? Good question. Uh, number one, you have a super fresh start. So there's a difference between a fresh start and a super fresh start, like a hero and a superhero, right? Like it's clearly a difference. It's like a supercharged, super fresh start. And the best way to what that means to describe what that means is that no one knows for real no one knows who you are where you came from what you did what you belong to what you believe like nobody knows like at all for no reason right like it's a complete blank slate you can totally reinvent yourself to be the next best thing that you believe you want to be right like you are like you are given that permission by you which is crazy and if you don't like see that then like that's a lot of like maturity that you have to like, get through but what's interesting about that is in another country there's no principles guiding you to end up being what you used to be like let's say you're you're going through some troubles things that were like that were difficult for you in your home country you you unless you bring that with you you could just reinvent yourself. You could be told, I could be Abe when I go to Vietnam and nobody would know unless they met Abe, <laughs> right? I could be like, my name is Abe, what's good? <laughs> okay, so thank you for sharing the pros and cons that you've, uh, that you've had. Now I wanna shift and I want to hear stories. I want you to tell me about your worst experience since you've been living in your Japan. The worst thing that's ever happened to you. Well, that's a hard one. Uh, I would have to break it down into three separate kind of uh, explanations in order for it to be clearly communicated uh, what I was going through. I think that's that's pretty much what made this interview very difficult for me to write was this part, was to answer this question, to be honest with you. So one of the worst experiences I could break down into three different parts, okay? The first one is personally, the second one is professionally, and the third one would be privately. So by 2019, I was able to recognize how to put into words what I've experienced, okay? So it's 2021, so I've been working on this answer for like three years, really. And one of the worst experiences I've, I've had in Japan is a type of racism a type of prejudice a discrimination this this like loneliness like this depression like i'm still experiencing this today but with different tools i feel much better but during the time two years ago three years ago it wasn't as good professionally in my tenure at my job i was ranked the worst teacher at my job now you wouldn't believe this and i every time i tell people this story i was like yes i was ranked the last absolute worst teachers because my character foundation is uh it wasn't a it wasn't the american that people were looking for right like that doesn't make sense like when people think american they don't think me right they don't my my image conflicted with what many native speakers believed of what americans or typical americans look like and I'm like i'm sorry i don't fit that bill like I, i'm not there for you Right? Like I I had this image that was look at me. Like clearly I am I have an, an Asian background. Like I have features that are, are obviously Filipino or Asian or Chinese, whatever, 
right? So that right there gave me a disadvantage to what the image that was the people were looking for. And number two, my life experiences were very outrageous. They were they were too much for many sheltered people. It came to a point where I had to stay in the act one of all of my stories. By the time I got to my fourth year, my third year in my job, I stopped telling stories. I just told people like personality, like characters, plot, and that's it. Like I didn't tell anybody in point, right? Because if I told someone, yes, I went to Las Vegas like every weekend, that, that already is, is already too outrageous. And it was very painful when people would look at me and not believe my stories. Right? Like, how would you feel if you told a story and people would sit there and be like, no, that's unbelievable. Why would you do that? That's crazy. That kind, of, that kind of happens to me already. I mean, I've done some pretty epic stuff just like you, so people probably would be a little, a little hesitant to believe what we're talking about. That is very true. And the problem with that is there is this idea of far-fetched exaggeration that becomes a form of distrust distrust and then students believe that they can't believe you and because something is is unbelievable and you hold on to that it almost starts to sound like a lie right and because you are made out to sound like a liar it's really hard for you to be a great teacher it's hard for you to be a teacher because people don't believe what you're saying right like why do you think I was ranked last like it's because people didn't believe me and I was ranked last because everyone thought I was a liar I'm like, guys, like, yes, I, I went to Disneyland all the time. I had a Disneyland pass. Like, I'm sorry it takes so long for you to get to Disneyland all the time. Like, I can go to Disneyland all the time. It was great. I went to USC. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I can just walk to Disneyland. It was the bomb. You know what I mean? Like, how is this outlandish? Right? Like, yes, I could just walk to TJ every weekend. It was just a bridge. It's like a 10-minute walk. You know what I mean? Like, are you kidding me? Like, how is that outrageous to just walk into another country? Like... Like, how is that crazy, right? And I'm the one like looking like people are like looking at me like I'm making up stories all the time, right? And there was a lot of inconsistencies. I've recognized for one of my third points, this is still professionally, I haven't gone to anything else really. It's, it's when in, in, in Japan, there's a Japan way of life. There's a Japanese way of life. And if you don't follow that lifestyle, you're you're totally separated okay like if you don't drink the green tea eat rice you know if you don't speak the language if you don't like fall the like if you don't do the Japanese thing you are ostracized ladies and gentlemen you are not part of this culture and people will literally shun you like you have a disease so people were already social distancing from me before COVID okay this was a real thing that I was dealing with here in this country and I kept it a secret because my job literally told me to not tell what, not tell nobody what was going on with me. I had to delete YouTube videos from my channel, okay? So my boss, my manager would call me during company hours to tell me to delete videos. It was crazy, <laughs> right? Like it was insane uh, just to like silence me. Right? Just to silence me as a human, as a man, as a, as a teacher, as a person. Right? And then now I'm the crazy one. Right? Like I'm the one making up all these stories all the time. Right? Like everyone's looking at me like Spencer, like clearly you're a bad teacher. You don't know how to communicate. Like you're a liar. We can't believe you. And the, people were social distancing from me in 2018, 2019. Right? So when COVID came around, like it didn't really matter to me. Like I had like two years of experience. Like it's fine. You know, and then personally, it started to affect me, you know, because then a lot of things started to bleed on me. Like, I couldn't tell who was my friend. I couldn't tell who was like really looking out for me. Right. I couldn't. I couldn't tell what was going on. And then, like, of course, like, I'm embarrassed, right, to tell this to like my friends or family. I was so scared to tell everybody, you know, who was rooting for me, who was thinking that I was doing great for myself. I didn't want to tell them I'm going through some problems. Right? And like, of course, when you're living a, overseas, like you're alone, right? Like I have no one around me to tell, like to like bounce ideas off of, like I'm literally alone, you know, in a country where I don't speak the language, where everybody thinks I'm a liar. And because I didn't become Japanese, I'm ostracized. Like there's so many layers to that, that by definition, 
is painful. And I couldn't wrap that up any better without it being communicated the way I have right now, you know? And I suffered a lot where I even got this uh, crazy disease. I don't know if I told anybody, but it's the first time I'm going to tell anybody, people here. It's called varicella zoster. I had it on my forehead. I probably, I don't know, it's probably here. I have a scar on my forehead. I had this super huge uh, type of growth because of the stress I was developing. And I had to wear this ridiculous band -aid, bandage over my forehead for like three months at my job because of like of the stress I was dealing with and I had no one to talk to and in Japan like mental health issues aren't real <laughs> right so if I told so yeah if I told somebody I was experiencing depression if I told somebody that I felt sad right they would be like no you're not feeling sad Spencer like clearly you're fine right and this all happened believe it or not on the br on the br all of this happened and then my my long term relationship i i had a i broke up with one of my closest friends of like all time so like icing on the cake right yeah that, that does sound like a pretty pretty tough time uh, for you but thank you very much for sharing and i'm glad that you were able to to overcome that uh, and we'll go into that you know, in another video or at another time on how you overcame that. Uh, but I've got a follow up question. Based on your experience that you went through in Japan, has it caused you to think about moving back to the US at all? That's a good question, man. Moving back to the US? I have. I have. I have. I have. I, uh, I, I was at a really low point where moving back to the US was an option. However, I recognized that if I went back to the US, I would be in the same trap of not finding a job or, you know, uh, being in the same rat race that I was told to be in, or I would come back home empty handed, right? Like I would be showing up at the front doorstep of my parents' house, like, hey, I'm back. And then I would go out on Friday night going to PB Barn Grill or whatever. I don't even know what it's called anymore. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right? Be talking to 22 year old, you know, college women and be like, hey, like, what are you doing with your life? Like, I lived in Japan for five years. Like, I'm cool. Right? And that didn't seem like the option. Right? And then I had option number two, which is to go somewhere else. And reinvent myself. Remember this who hero superhero go somewhere and reinvent myself again and n I think I've used all my energy for this moment Right like to overcome this it would be the greatest accomplishment of my life It would be the testimony of who Spencer is going to be forever Right like if I could win this moment right here like right now, like this is it. This is the time where I am not turning back. You know, I can't go back to the US. I can't, I can't go back being that scared little boy thinking that people are gonna help me out because I'm a friendly guy. No, I need to win right now. I have to figure out how to win because no one's gonna rescue me but me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, no one's looking like, like, I know you care for me. I know my parents care for me. I know people care about me. But at the end of the day, no one's going to rescue you but you. You feel me? Like, that's just what it is. Right? And I was thinking to myself, like, you are always drowning. You got to save yourself. And that, that's what I did. And here I am building and fighting because I am not afraid anymore. Right? Like, can't nothing stop this. Like, this train is moving. Right? And even though I go to the wrong stations, it don't matter. I get right back on and keep going. I know my destination and I'm going to get there soon. It's just not today. It's just not tomorrow. But I will get there. So if I had to go to the U.S., I know what that destination looks like. But I don't want to go there at this time. That's not where I want to go. I have so much more places I want to visit and fight for to earn this place on earth like uh, like everybody else I guess all right yeah you know what that's a great inspiration and that's also great uh, self-talk I'm glad that you're doing that 
And if no one else says it, I'm proud of you for making that move, seeing that in your own self and, and, and accepting that. And so, all right, great. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and wrap this up here. Stay tuned for part three, where we talk more about skills and things to develop on moving in. All right, see you in the next video.